Let's talk about linear search. The term search is used to describe the act of locating an item in a list. Now, we all search for our socks in the morning. We all search for the right words to say in a conversation. In this context, in a computer science context, we're talking about lists of numbers, maybe, characters, letters, punctuation, those sorts of things. So a list of numbers, characters, and maybe even lists of objects in a game as well. The term linear um, kind of hints at the strategy that we need to use to search for things in these sorts of lists. It's basically suitable where there is no structure in the list. So, you know, unless you're very um, organised and you keep your socks in a particular order in the, in the drawer, basically you're performing what's called a linear search to find the socks that you want. You're picking out one set of socks at a time until you find the one you want because there's no way of predicting where they'll be. So there's no way of predicting. You know they're going to be in the drawer somewhere, but you don't know where. That's the crucial thing. There's no way of predicting where the item will be. Okay. And the basic strategy for this one is you start at the beginning. Start at the beginning. And you keep going until the end. Start at the beginning and work through to the end. If you find it, great. If you don't, not so great. But that's kind of how it works. So let me show you an example of this. Um, it's a slightly contrived example, obviously, but it's algorithmic. Okay, so we can write it down as a set of uh, of unique steps. It's um, the if, if you ever did need to locate a needle in a haystack, this is probably how you do it. Um, I'd suggest you perhaps pause the video for a couple of seconds, and or maybe for 30 seconds, and read through that. Um, convince yourself that it, it, it kind of makes sense as well. So I'll, I'll and then come back to me, and I'll um, I'll talk you through it. Okay, and we're back. Um, right, you'll notice, you should notice that this is broken down actually into four different sections. Now this is decomposition. In one of the other videos I've done, I've talked about decomposition, about breaking down a problem into smaller steps to make those steps easier to solve, make the problem easier to solve in total. You'll see there are four steps and I think it, 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 um, it makes it a lot easier when you break it down and you just consider each of those one at a time. Locate in the haystack, sort that first. Then we'll search for the needle in the haystack, sort that next. Then we'll leave the barn, sort that third. And lastly, we'll go and report what we've found, do that one last. So there's four stages there, and I think it helps to, to consider each one one at a time. So that's decomposition. You'll notice there's, um, there's um, a couple of different types of, um, of um, programming uh, principles at play here. And I hope you can see them, I'll, I'll point them out to you. You should see here, there's the word if, and through to the, say, dang it, another piece of hay. This is an example of selection. This is an example of selection. I'm basically saying, if the item is a needle, or the needle stuck in the item, then shout, found it, boss. Otherwise, and we say else, because otherwise it's a bit long to type, say, dang it, another piece of hay. So this is, um, this is like the... The crossroads, and if you look at the algorithmic thinking video, you'll, you'll you'll notice that I've done sort of three roads. The sequencing thing starts at the top and goes down to the bottom. That's kind of, that's the way it works. Uh, sequencing it just one thing after another. The, the the crossroads is here. Okay, so if this do that, otherwise do that. So go this way, otherwise go that way. You should see there's another one here as well. So there's another selection block there. So there's another selection there. Your sequencing is just starting at the beginning and going to the end. Okay, and if you look carefully, there's some iteration here as well. So the repeat bit, repeat until there is iteration. See if I can fit that on. Or repeating something. Okay, doing things more than once. So there's iteration, selection, and sequencing. And and like I said in the in the um, algorithmic thinking video, if you if you haven't watched that, I suggest you go back and watch it. That's all computer programs are just built up from those three things. Once you've got your head around those three things as principles, you're pretty much sorted. Um, you should hopefully also see in here um, that there are two, I've coloured in words in, in two different styles, okay? The words that are in, the words that are in um, orange are imperative verbs. So uh, I'm going to write over this because it's in the way, but imperative verbs, they tell you to do something. 
Okay, so it's uh, locate, remove, uh, examine, shout, say, exit, present, enjoy, hide. They're, 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 um, they're telling you specifically to do one thing. You'll also find that in green, there are, there are commands. Now, these are, these are commands that the algorithm needs in order to run. So the commands are in green, okay? And everything else that's not a command or um, or an imperative verb is, is, is in white. You'll also see there's some structure here as well. You'll notice that this gap there, and there's a gap there and here as well, and there's a gap there and here. That's um, That gives the algorithm structure. It helps you to see where particular blocks of, um, of execution start and end. Okay, so it's got structure as well. Um, and I would call that indentation. So I indent the code, indentation. So I indent the code to make it, or the algorithm, to make it uh, easier to see where things start and where things end. So again, you might want to pause the video and have another look at that um, uh, for a couple of seconds. Right, let me show you a practical demonstration, okay? So I'm just going to switch to um, a live view of a set of set of playing cards. And um, I've got absolutely no idea w w which playing cards are in this pack. Uh, th these five playing cards are pretty much all I can fit on my visualizer. Um, well, let's give it a go. Okay, I'm I'm looking for a particular playing card. I'm looking for the ten, the number ten. Doesn't matter what suit it is. I'm just looking for the number ten. A strategy for this that 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 I will take is I will start at the left hand side over here with the first card, and I'll turn that card over and see whether it's the card I'm looking for or not. If it's not, then I'll put the card back and I'll look for at the next one. This is this is important as well. It's it's kind of crucial that you understand that that a computer can only really compare one thing with another thing. A computer can't take a holistic view of that list and see it like we can. We, we use a, a technique called heuristics to, to, to look at the whole thing, the whole um, the whole problem and, and, and find the best solution to it. A computer can't do that, can really only compare one thing with another thing. So basically I'm holding in my head the number 10, which is the card I'm looking for, and I'm gonna compare what's in my head to the card that's here. So first of all, I'll say, right, okay, that's a jack. Compare it to the 10, it's not what I'm looking for. Turn the card back over. Look at the next card. Is it a 10? No, it's a two. Turn it over, look at the next card. So I'm doing a linear search here. I'm starting at one end and I'm working my way across the, to the other side. Number 10's in my head, comparing it to the four. It's not the card I'm looking for. Next card, 10's in my head, comparing it to the king. It's not the card I'm looking for. Next card, 10's in my head, compare it to that. It's an eight, it's not there. I've run out of cards at this point, okay? You'll notice the repetitive nature of that is ideally suited to execution by a machine. And this is why this sort of process, this sort of algorithm, is is very you know it's 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 very rarely carried out by a real person to be honest. Now this is the worst case of a linear search. Basically, the worst case of a linear search is that the 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 item I'm looking for isn't even in the list at all. Okay, let me look for an item that's um, that's I know kind of now because I'm being a bit I'm being a bit cheeky and I've looked at the list already. I know he's in that list and I know the king's in that list. Okay, so I'm going to start from the left hand side again. Look, look for the king. Right. Okay. So we'll start. I've got king in my head. I'm looking at the first card. It's a jack, it's not the card I'm looking for. King in my head, it's a two, it's not the card I'm looking for. King's in my head, I'm comparing it to the four, it's not the card I'm looking for. King's in my head, I'm comparing it to, whoa, I found it. Okay, that I do not need to look at that card because I found the item I'm looking for. So basically, if a linear search ends, it could end early. It might end up, if the card's not there at all, having to search all the way through the list. In this case, I've only had to look at four items in the list. I never need to look at the fifth one. Right, oh, I've forgotten what the first card was. It's got a sneaky look at it, okay, it's Jack. Right, okay, third possible case I could get in a linear search is where it's the first item in the list. So I'm looking for the Jack now, okay, because I know it's the first one. So I'm looking for the Jack, I've got Jack in my head, and I turn the first card over, and lo and behold, it's a jack, and I don't have to look at any of the other cards in that list. This is the best case of a linear search. So the best case of a linear search is that it's it's the first card that or the first item in the list that I look at. Okay, so we've got the best case. We've got kind of a middling case. It's not quite the average case, but it's kind of a middling case. And then when I was looking for the number 10, that's the worst case because it's not in the list at all okay so practically that's how i might see a linear search if i was going to do it uh, myself but uh, as i say that's all right for five items in a, in a list but if there's 50 million items in the list i ain't going to do that myself i'm going to get a machine to do it for me instead all right let's pop back onto the canvas um 
All right, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you something slightly more complicated now. And, and again, I definitely want you to pause the video at this point and, and have a look through this. I'm not going to particularly go through this in a lot of depth now. What I am going to do, though, is I'm going to come back to this in a video that I'm going to do after this where I'm going to implement this in a programming language called Python. So just pause the video, have a look through, make sure you can see the structure of it and the potential approach. Don't worry if you don't quite understand the, the, the different syntax in there, the way that things are written. I'll, I'll, I'll talk through that at some point, perhaps in, a, in another video. Just pause the video for a sec. Okay, and we're back, right? Um, I'm going to take the same approach as I did with the haystack one, and I'm going to identify the different components. So this is the decomposition part of this. First of all, there's a set at the top there, a little group at the top of, in, of instructions, imperative verbs that are doing something here. There's a block in the middle that looks like it's um, that it's doing all the fancy stuff, and there's a block at the end there, which is uh, which is do doing something else. So let me try now and again identify back. We'll look back to stuff we talked about in the previous video, in, in a previous video. If you haven't seen the algorithmic thinking video, I would probably suggest that you do watch that and then maybe come back and watch this one again. You should see the decomposition. You should also see this um, right at the top. We've got a section where I initialize some. You can think of these like um, x's and y's in algebra, like variables in algebra and variables in science equations. That's all they are. They're just uh, they're just placeholders for values. So I've initialized or I've gathered. So this is the other thing that's in there. Is there some input as well? Okay, I've gathered. Some information from the from the user. I've got a sequence of, uh, of values, and I've got a target value that I'm looking at. Okay, so there's me initialising me input. I've also got some storage going on in here as well. It's going to bug me that I've not done that s slightly thicker. So I'm going to go back and do that, where I'm remembering those th that information for for a little bit later on. In the second section, I've got some processing. So I'm actually carrying out some useful work. I'm checking things. I'm comparing stuff. I'm setting variable values equal to other things. I've also got some storage occurring there as well. And in the last part, I've actually got a little bit of processing going on there. It's a bit too thick, but I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, and I've also finally got some output, which is uh, which are these ones here that say output, well, obviously. Right, again, let me just try and summarize where we've got and I'm constantly linking back to to previous videos that I've done to previous things I've talked about so you know it's really really useful if you go back and watch the decomposition and the um, uh, algorithmic thinking videos as well you'll notice that there are some imperative verbs in here okay there are imperative verbs they're in orange there are some commands okay these are algorithmic commands, I guess. Start here, carry on, do that. If this is that, do that, otherwise stop, and so on and so forth. Okay. There is also structure in here. Apart from the decomposition part, which is the structure in the three different sections in the in the algorithm, there's also indentation you can see there and here. And that indentation just helps me to keep track of where what what where things start, where things end, what happens inside something else happening and so on and so forth. So it's very, very important. Um, and I think it's worth mentioning at this point that there is some abstraction going on. For instance, I've not specified what that sequence is. I've not said it's a sequence of numbers, a sequence of letters, a sequence of objects, a sequence of playing cards, a sequence of socks, It because it, it doesn't matter. It's not relevant to it. I've not said what the target might look like. Okay, It could be anything at all. So this is an example of abstraction. This is a generalized solution. It's not specific. I've not said get sequence of playing cards. I've just said get sequence because that's all it needs to know. There's also decomposition in there as well. And again, I think I've probably mentioned that a million times now, that this is broken down into three steps, into three different sections. It's decomposed, tackle one at a time, understand one at a time. Okay. So last thing, um, we'll just kind of try and summarise where, uh, wh where we've got to with this. So I'll, I'll very quickly go through and I'll summarise um, what a linear search looks like. It's a very basic searching algorithm. It's suitable for unstructured data or unordered data. So suitable for unstructured data. Okay, um, it's okay to use for small lists, for small sequences. 
okay um, the best case so it's worth probably talking about these the best case is where it's the first item the one you're looking for is the first item in the list in the list okay and the worst case the worst case is where the item is not in the list at all a lot of people make the mistake of saying the worst case is the last item in the list but that's not the worst case the worst case is it's not in the list at all right whistle stop tour of, uh, of, of linear search I hope that's made sense please go back and have a look at the things again um, and uh, look forward to the Python implementation video of that it's cool